All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to our second to the last um, session for the week. And today we are showcasing um, Chiropody program. And with that, I'm going to just start off by saying that um, we are very happy to have you in today's session. And of course, we have a very good lineup of program for all of you for today. Um, I'm Grace Acosta. I am the Associate Registrar for Enrollment Management and Systems at Michener. And with me today are our panelists from our students and of course our faculty and chair. And so before anything else, I'd like to introduce our panel, um, starting off with our program chair, um, Megan. Megan, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Britton. I'm the academic chair for the Cropity program. And welcome to the Cropity session. Awesome. Thank you, Megan. Mira, our PCL. Um, hi, everyone. Um, good evening. Um, my name is Mira. I am a professor in the Cropity program. Um, I also um, take on a role uh, called the program communication liaison for the program. Uh, welcome to the uh, virtual session. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mira. And of course, we have our lovely um, student ambassadors. They're our students from Chiropathy program. Jenny, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everybody. My name's Jenny. I'm a second year student in the Chiropathy program. Awesome. Thank you, Jenny. And by the way, Jenny also works with us in the registrar's office. So really happy to have you with us today. And then finally, um, Olivia. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia. I'm a third year Cropity student. Um, I look forward to chatting with you guys a bit later in the session. Amazing. Thank you so much, Olivia and Jenny, and of course, our um, faculty panel. Um, I also have my team here with me from admissions. I'm going to start off um, with Dylan, our admissions coordinator, and Teresa. Um, Dylan, go ahead. Hi, everyone. I am uh, Dylan Matson. I am the admissions coordinator here at Michener. So I help oversee all admissions for all of our full time and part time programs. Awesome. And I'm sure you might have corresponded with him in one or two occasions. So happy to have you here with us, Dylan, today. And then Teresa. Hello, everybody. I'm Teresa. I'm one of the admissions officers here at Michener and look forward to answering all your questions. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa and Dylan. So before we jump right into our presentation for, a day, uh, for today, just letting you all know that we will be doing a program presentation, which consists of the faculty and student panel um, discussion. And then throughout the um, presentation itself, please feel free to um, direct your questions towards the chat. Um, our admissions team will be there to address your questions. And of course, we will be selecting some um, some questions that will be read throughout the end of the presentations for our live Q&A. And that having said, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Teresa, for our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the sacred land where we are today, which has been and continues to be the traditional territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit River, among many other unnamed and unrecognized indigenous communities. At this location, we stand on land protected by the Dish with One Spoon Treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. We recognize this agreement not as a thing of the past, but as a promise today and into the future. We must share the responsibility of ensuring that the dish is never empty by taking care of the land and the creatures we share it with and transforming our personal and institutional relationships. This meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work and learn on this land. We urge you, as future Canadian healthcare practitioners and leaders to acknowledge that it is our collective responsibility to strengthen our ties within the communities we serve and practice healthcare in a way that advances the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's 
seven health related recommendations and practice your profession in that spirit. Today's agenda uh, consists of a few things. So we'll briefly talk about why it's great to study at Michener. You'll hear from our panel of students and faculty and chair. Um, Dylan will go over the application process and discuss tuition and other fees. And finally, uh, we'll try to answer all your questions in the live Q&A. So what makes Michener a great place to study? Um, well, we have a singular focus. So we have no distractions from our primary mission to educate health professionals and fulfill health human resources strategies of Ontario. We are part of the healthcare system. So since 2016, Michener is integrated with Canada's top hospital network, UHN, consisting of Toronto General, Toronto Rehab, Toronto Western, and Princess Margaret. So this provides Michener students immersion in patient care from day one. And we believe in experiential learning. So 89% of Michener grads are satisfied with Michener preparing them for job success. And finally, we are career driven. So 97% of Michener graduates are employed in a job related to their field one year after graduation. Over to you, Grace. Awesome. Thank you, Teresa. And now, before we move on to our panel discussion for today, there's just like a few um, interesting facts or historic, um, historical facts that we want to share about um, the Karopadi program. So did you know that our Karopadi program was introduced in 1981 in collaboration with the George Brown College and Toronto General Hospital? It was also the first program of its kind to be offered in Canada. And right now, if I'm not mistaken, our chiropathy program is the only um, English um, speaking program in the country. And that said, um, I want to kickstart our program discussion. And the first question of today is um, probably either Mira or um, Megan, you could um, address this question. Um, can you tell us more about the program and what makes this profession essentially being a chiropodist unique and fulfilling? Sure, I can jump in and then uh, Mira can take over. Chiropody is a very uh, fulfilling program because we are um, primary care practitioners. And because we're primary care practitioners, we have the ability to work in a variety of settings in private practice, in community, in hospital settings. Um, but we also don't require referrals for patients to come and see us. And we do treat our patients holistically. We have prescription rights and we have surgical rights. And um, we have a lot of really exciting things in our profession that make us very unique. Um, and an asset, and most people have feet, so uh, our patients are in an abundance. Mira, anything to add there? Um, I would say um, the um, the foot care needs in Ontario and uh, across Canada is is really great um, at the moment, and certain diseases um, are on the on the rise, uh, for example, diabetes. And you're usually patients with diabetes and other health conditions, they uh, require uh, foot care. So um, chiropodists are very much needed in our communities across Canada and um, chiropodists are in big, huge demand. So um, once you graduate, there's um, definitely a job waiting for you, either in a private practice setting um, or in a community health se care setting or in a hospital. Um, more towards the private practice and community health care nowadays uh, compared to a hospital setting. Thanks for sharing that, Megan and uh, Mira. And alongside um, what makes the profession unique, um, can you tell us, is there any necessary skill or background um, that you know, prospective students must have in order to succeed in their program or their profession? 
I can answer that. I can start and then Megan can continue. Um, you have to be uh, very good at being an independent practitioner. Um, usually in your own practice, you are the, the practitioner. Um, you're not working under somebody else. So you have to be very good at that. You have to be a very good communicator um, to communicate with the patient, but also other healthcare providers in the community. Um, so you could have a... a more holistic care for the patient. So, you know, they come to you for foot care, but the foot is attached to the rest of the body. So you're going to have to communicate with, um, you know, their endocrinologist, family medicine, um, cardiologist, um, vascular specialist, things like that. So you have to be able to practice independently, but also be a good community, a communicator. The other important thing about the daily practice of property, your manual dexterity is very important because unlike when you go to a family doctor, um, the doctor checks you, does a quick assessment, but most of the time there's no procedures involved. It's most of the time uh, there is the assessment, but then there's a prescription or a referral. Um, most of our treatment, every appointment pretty much is uh, there is a procedure involved. So you have to be very good at, uh, with your hands um, um, to do proper uh, foot care for patients. Yeah, that's that's really great to know. Like dexterity is really important. Um, teamwork, communication, and also being, I think, self-driven. Because I think this profession, um, you might want to have like an entrepreneurial spirit as well. Because that, um, I mean, in terms of that, and maybe we could talk about that later on in terms of career prospects. So um, most of our students, our prospective students, are also curious about the class schedules. Um, briefly, would you be able to describe how um, classes are being conducted and typically how many hours would there be? What's the spread between um, the virtual classes and then would there be any um, on-site labs um, for the program? So um, Megan or Mira, feel free to jump in. Sure. At present, our chiropathy, our chiropathy um, didactic components are virtual, as are most programs in the building. Our lab and our clinical space are on-site, in-person. We do require that uh, you are present. Um, in our third year, we do have clinical placements, which could be placed predominantly in Ontario, but there is the caveat it could be anywhere in Canada as well. Recently, we've had some students go out to uh, Newfoundland. So, um, but a lot of that is, um, that's at your third year. Our clinical does run in our first and second years, and currently that is housed on site at the Michener location in Toronto. So Grace. in general, sorry, um, Grace, uh, in general, uh, each semester, they are probably expected to be on site uh, two days a week, um, either for a lab or to be in clinic. Uh, until Perfect. third year and uh, you know, when they get to third year it's about three to four days uh, at a placement site yeah that's really good to know because most of our prospective students want to know like um, of course we understand some of them might also want to work part-time so just having that um, kind of like sense of how the program classes are being conducted especially like on-site labs um, would be really helpful for them to anticipate. Um, and so since we have started talking about, um, you know, lab classes, we have also encountered a lot of questions about, you know, how are lab classes being conducted specific to the chiropathy program, um, as well as what equipment would students be using in their lab? Okay, I'll start with first year. Um, first year, first semester, they have, um, um, the, in terms of labs, they are at the UFT dissection lab one day a week, um, and they are also in a podiatric medicine lab um, once a week. Um, they are learning the basic skills of assessment in that first semester. So assessing the pulses, so circulation, assessing the neurological status of a patient, uh, musculoskeletal uh, assessment, all those basic foundational assessment skills they'll be learning in first year. 
uh, of a semester. Um, second semester, they start going into clinic one day a week um, where they will practice that assessment skill. So they learn the assessment skills in a safe environment in first semester in our labs, in, like in the picture right here. So you see one of the students is um, kind of learning how to use the scalpel. Um, and then in the safe environment, you you know learn to how to hold the scalpel, for example, and how to put the blade on basic skills in first semester. And then second semester, you are going to take that skill into a clinical setting and directly work with patients. So you are integrating what you're learning um, very shortly after in the clinic. So that way there's no lag and you are, you are able to apply the skills you learn in the lab very quickly in a real life environment. So that, that's the advantage of our program, uh, where you don't have to wait for three years before you actually go and see a real patient. You are starting to see real patients right from the second semester onwards. And, and the ability to, like, let's say you learn about a condition in the lecture this week, and then next week, or even the same week, you get to actually see a patient who has that condition. So that connection is made, and it's uh, it's it's really a unique um program to be able to learn it that way. Like you're, as, as you're learning the theory and the didactic, you are also actually experiencing it in the clinic and, and practicing it. I was talking about how we integrate our lab and then the clinic um, shortly after. Um, in the first semester, I talked about the podiatric medicine lab, and then you have your dissection lab. In the second semester, you will have um, clinic one day a week. So you're in there the, the whole day seeing patients. Uh, but the way we structure the clinic, um, we add on to your skills. So in the first semester, you'll be primarily focusing on the assessment skills. So you'll have a patient, you can palpate um, their pulses of the foot, uh, check for the neurological. So we have like tools that you can use to check the sensation in the feet. Um, um, you can do musculoskeletal assessment, things like that, and then you will present that to your instructor or the supervisor who is watching over you. And then if it's um, skills that you have already learned, like nail care or callus debridement, um, if it's a simple patient, we'll allow you to start, you know, venturing into that uh, procedures uh, realm. Um, in the second semester, third semester, so that going into third year, uh, you will actually, uh, you would have by then learned more skills in your labs. Um, so you will actually uh, take the patient from assessment, presenting the uh, findings to completing a treatment. Um, and then in fourth year, uh, sorry, the fourth semester, we'll get you to do even more on your own and independently. And at that stage, we'll uh, actually start to question you in terms of um, critical thinking. So like, you know, you, okay, you did this assessment, you saw these um, manifestations, what does that mean? And how are you going to manage it? Um, so we start to make you think and put all the different courses you have learned to, together and then come up with the management plan for the patient. Uh, so that way we structure the clinical placements um, in a way that you build on your skills and uh, knowledge. Um, in our fifth semester, the, we, we have a summer semester. So um, first two years, you don't have a summer semester. Well, first summer, you don't have a semester. You don't have classes. The second summer you are with us, you will have a, a clinical and an evidence-based medicine course. So you'll be pretty busy. Uh, it, it runs about 10 weeks plus another week for um working with seniors, which is another uh, Michener-wide program where you learn how to, you know, um, uh, manage or learn to um, treat patients uh, who are seniors and you, are, you get a good understanding of um, the difficulties uh, that they face and how we can uh, uh, manage those situations. Thank um, you, Mira. Um, oh, thanks. Teresa. We're just, um, sorry, everybody, we're going to try to get the screens um, working, but in the meantime, we can move on with some of the important questions we have um, from our students, if 
Mira or Megan, if you could um, answer a little bit. Um, you spoke about clinical. Um, we got a lot of questions usually with, in admissions about the clinical placement. Can you describe how, how those work and what can students expect from their clinical semesters? Sure, on-site in their first and second year, we do have an on-site clinical placement. So like Mira was just speaking about in your second semester is when you would start to do your on-site clinical semester. Um, clinic is integrated into every semester from there on out. Um, and then when you get to third year, we do, it's broken into four different blocks. And um, three of those blocks are outside of Michener's building. And uh, they are predominantly in Ontario, but anywhere across Canada. Um, so in your third year, you can expect to be on clinical placement for five days a week. Um, and leading up to that, it's anywhere from one to two days. And you mentioned in third year. So how many clinical semesters are there in the program? So in third year, there's two clinical semesters. and Otherwise, it's integrated into the other ones, so it's an additional four semesters. So I guess six altogether. Does that make sense? Thank you, Megan. Uh, Olivia, I believe that um, you're currently in your third year, right? So how are you in your clinical semester? How is that going? Yes, I'm currently in my first clinical semester. Um, it's been going great. I think that this has I really like the clinical aspect of going into different um, rotations. So we rotate every seven to eight weeks and we get a variety of different clinical experiences. So my first placement, I was at um, a rehab center and uh, a hospital. And now I'm at a community care clinic. So you do get some varying experiences and it really helps to solidify all of your didactic learning by hands-on experiences with the patients. So, so far it's been great. Um, it's really exciting. You get to see different patients and you're out in the real world. Um, so yeah, it's been great. That's great to hear. I know that's um, to really practice what you're learning is you know, the ultimate benefit of, of the program and really seeing how much you learn and applying it. Um, I think we can move on. Uh, sorry, with um, licensing. So we do have a little bit um, more questions, Megan and Mira. Or a lot of the prospective applicants ask about um, licensing and professional licensing. Is there any licensing requirement for this profession? So to be a chiropodist, and if so, can you briefly describe the process? Sure. Currently, uh, when you are a graduate of our chiropody program, we have set you up so that you should be able to successfully complete the registration exam that is set forward by the College of Chiropodists of Ontario. Um, it is currently comprised of three sections. You have a written section, which has multiple choice questions. Again, this is all currently, so all subject to change. Um, on didactic content to be able to treat your patients, some of it's case-based, some of it's uh, uh, just theory in general. And then there is a jurisprudence section, so making sure that you understand the ethical uh, responsibilities that are placed upon you as a chiropodist or as a registrant once you do pass your exam. And currently, there is also an OSCE, which is a form of a bell ringer, um, and you go into multiple rooms and you perform a skill um, in front of an evaluator. Thank you, Megan. Um, and moving on, so Olivia, you mentioned at where your clinical placement is that um, you could be in different sites. So career prospects with the program, um, and anybody can answer this question, where can graduates of the program work? And could you describe the typical workday of a chiropodist? Um, yeah, so I can jump in for this one um, based on just my experience and being in clinical placements and kind of learning a little bit more um, from also previous third years. So there is um, a number of job prospects and the program sets you up really well um, to build relationships with the placement 
that you get to experience throughout your third year. So um, you do form great relationships with uh, your preceptors and um, depending on where you're placed, uh, it could become a potential job opportunity in the future. Um, there are a number of people just constantly kind of um, trying to communicate with their dear students to see where they're interested in practicing. Um, myself, I will be staying in Ontario, most likely in the GTA um, or around there. And there are a number of people who kind of contact you in your third year that I found that really try to set you up for success in um, lining up job prospects to um, have that set up for you when you are graduated and successfully complete your board. It's great to hear that, you know, you're currently working in the clinical placement and that's could possibly turn into a job and then also to hear that you have a lot of support. So, you know, when you graduate, you're not fully on your own trying to figure out where am I going to work now that I'm licensed and pass the exam. Um, yeah, definitely. It takes a huge weight off your shoulders, just that that aspect of, you know, your career is, um, it feels, yeah, you get a lot of relief. So. Anything to add for more career prospects, Mira? Um, can I add, um, so recently, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the, uh, one of our uh, professional associations uh, conference, uh, Canadian Federation of Podiatric Medicine Conference, and a lot of the practitioners were looking for 30 students. <laughs> they were actually asking me and they were like hunting for 30 students to hire. Um, a lot of them are looking for uh, properties to work uh, for them. And uh, th they are having a hard time filling these vacant positions. So uh, job-wise, there is a lot of jobs available right now. Private and practice. I remember in the beginning, too, it was mentioned that as a chiropodist, you could also go into private and public. So there's lots of options. It's great to so, hear. Yeah, so these are private practitioners. And they're saying, like, even when they go on vacation, they're having to shut down the clinic because they can't get anybody to cover for them. Um, uh, there, are, There's so many people looking for um, to hire properties at this moment. Thank you. And Olivia, thank you for sharing your experience. We're going to move on and also hear from Jenny um, and talk about the student experience. So um, maybe we'll start with Jenny and then um, we'll go to Olivia. Why did you choose chiropody? Um, so I've always been interested in healthcare and I had other plans in mind when I was going through my undergrad. Uh, but towards the end of my undergrad, I did get introduced to a chiropodist when I was working in a multidisciplinary clinic. And when he described the profession to me and what we did, it just became something that I got super interested in. Um, from learning how to treat in terms of using medications to treat, whether it's a fungal or bacterial infection, and then going all the way into the opposite end with surgery and like learning how to treat with um, using stitching and performing surgeries like that, just all kind of aspects of it. And then including biomechanics, learning how to people walk, how to prescribe an orthotic, and just learning how to do management plans from the very beginning to the very end in patient care was just all very interesting things to me. And so I just, became, fell in love with the program and applied. <laughs> lots of options and lots of things to learn. How about you, Olivia? Why did you choose chiropody? Um, so similar to Jenny, I have a background in the undergrad in health sciences. Um, so I was actually introduced to chiropody by doing a co-op placement in my undergrad. So I kind of also fell in love at that time with the career, um, largely for its scope of practice and just kind of um, your ability to find your interest within um, this overarching profession. Um, it gives you a lot of space to work with and find what you like and don't like. Um, as Jenny was saying, uh, there's biomechanics, uh, surgery components, wound care. Um, you can work with a different different patient populations, elderly children, and everything, in everyone in between. Um, so yeah, I just like the flexibility that that gave me to kind of, you know, go into this field, but find where my interests lie within 
um, going through the program and that sort of thing. And as I was saying before, our um, rotation of clinical placements, especially in the third year, kind of allow you to further investigate and those processes and see where you um, want to go in the future. So, yeah. Thank you. And and Jenny, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, and this, these questions are for both of you, but Jenny, I'll let you go first. So what's it like being a student at Michener? I know you hold many roles as a student and what advice would you give future students to this program? Um, so I do enjoy the program. I would say the first year is, um, it's a lot of content. You just have to really make sure that you're prepared to persevere and put the work in, but it is very much a labor of love. Um, I very much, I see Olivia smiling. I'm sure she can relate to that. Um, but yeah, I, I think for first year, just be prepared that um, it is a difficult program. That's why they have high requirements to get in. Um, but it is fascinating what you do learn and learning so much about the foot. I walked in being like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll be learning about the foot. You really learn about the foot. There's so much to learn about the foot. So that's it's cool to see for that. <laughs> Could you briefly just talk about um, because Grace mention how you work as well as this, while you're studying like time management how does that how are you handling that yeah so I don't want to dissuade anybody but I like I said the first year is a lot of content and um, at least for myself I found it was having to adapt to a new way of studying compared to my undergrad so um, I did not work in my first year just I felt that that was the best for myself and just for being able to focus and kind of orient myself to this program and the requirements for learning for it. Um, but now that I'm in my second year and I have a better understanding of myself and how I learn in this program and how to study for certain courses. I am working right now I work in the schools registrar's office um, very much on a part time basis, though, but. Um, it's definitely something where I do a lot of planning, like I have multiple calendars and schedules and I plan out my study time, my projects time, like whenever I need to do things, I very much have to plan out that time. But if you are good with time management and you're able to kind of plan that out and space out your time to make sure you have the time to do everything, um, it's very achievable to be doing school, um, part-time work, and then be able to balance your work-life balance too. Thank you for sharing that, Jenny. It's important to hear because sometimes people ask, you know, can I still work part time even though I'm in a full time program? So it is possible, well, challenging, but definitely probably not in the first year. Um, I mean, others have had other opinions. I have spoken with some of my other classmates in my cohort that said they did work in their first year and, you know, good for them if they were able to balance that. But at least for myself and just knowing myself, I knew that I needed that extra time to study and learn to how to study for this program. Thank you. And Olivia, how is it like for you now that you're in the third year? Um, what's it like being a student and future and advice for future students to Karapati? Yeah, so um, my experience thus far, it's been a little bit different each year. Um, I would definitely have to echo Jenny's um, emphasis on time management, especially in the first year. Uh, for myself, I was entering into first year um, throughout the challenges of COVID just in my first semester, first year. So that was kind of a challenge in itself. And I also was not working um, during that period of time just because it was um, an adjustment period coming from undergrad. Jenny also mentioned um, a different kind of studying method uh, because you are building off of each course that you learn. And you will carry that knowledge straight through um, through third year and throughout the time that you're practicing. So it's not um, not to say that I did this, but it's not the cram and dump sort of method that you might be used to in uh, undergrad. You, um, my advice would definitely be take great notes um, and just really think about how your knowledge translates into practice, which is amazing because you get the experience of um, clinical experiences right from the beginning of the uh, program. So yeah, every year is different um, and you become more confident as you go. Like Jenny said, there's a lot of knowledge in first year, but it helps you in your continuing years to um, treat patients with confidence and 
they give you all the skills that you'll need. So yeah, it's been great. Another um, recommendation I would make is just really lean on your um, classmates and peers. Um, I, I personally like to work in a group setting. Um, it's a very hands-on program. So having the classmates to work on their feet and practice certain skills is invaluable. So um, really take advantage of, you know, you guys are all in it together. So um, yeah, it's great. And you see them in clinic. So it's nice to have that uh, sort of cl your classmates to lean on. Thank you so much. And Jenny, thank you as well. It's really helpful when we hear, you know, from, from the students and the experience. Um, we're going to move on to the application process. And um, Dylan will go over just the steps and what to expect. Sure. All righty. Next slide, please. Okay, so when applying for any admission program, uh, we have a general rule of thumb, and it's to review the admission requirements. Admission requirements are very important. Uh, we publish our admission requirements on our website to our view book every year, uh, and they are absolute. So that is always going to be your first step as an applicant. Ensure that your education that you've achieved or are in the process of completing matches those exact requirements. For chiropathy, uh, your undergraduate uh, bachelor's of science or BA kinesiology needs to be 2.7 or greater, and you'll also need human anatomy and physiology. Uh, we'll be holding a webinar on the 7th of December to go over these prerequisites in far greater detail. Um, but again, it's very important. Always uh, review the admission requirements before applying. The next thing you're going to want to do is prepare your documents. So make sure you have your official transcript ready to go um, and uh, submitted properly to OCAS, which is step three. When you do decide to apply, you will want to go to Ontario Colleges, OCAS, submit your application no later than the 1st of February. So every year, our applications typically open October 1st, October 2nd, and close on the 1st of February of the application year. On OCAS, you'll be able to create a profile, input your name, information, and there you can request your transcripts be sent directly from your host institution directly to OCAS. That's where our team or my team then uh, refers to your applicant profile and reviews all your documents from there. Uh, once you have applied on OCAS, in about three to five business days, you can anticipate an acknowledgement email coming from my team. In this email, you will be assigned a Michener ID. This Michener ID is then what can allow you to move on to step four, which is to register and complete the CASPER test. Uh, this CASPER test uh, is a mandatory uh, admission prerequisite component. Um, so you do need to complete one. And at Michener, we have pre-selected specific test dates, uh, and those can be found on our mandatory admission requirements page. So all of the dates that are acceptable for the CASPER test are pre-published. Uh, and as we have on the slide here, the final uh, date for taking a CASPER this year is the 22nd of February. So uh, along with completing your CASPER test, you also need to ensure that you've submitted all documents required for admission. Uh, and the final date for submitting any transcript is the 8th of February. So this includes, uh, this also uh, applies to people who are in progress of completing their degree. So if you're in your final year, your fourth year of your bachelor's of science, uh, what we recommend is on OCAS, there's an option to submit your transcript at the end of the fall semester. Uh, so this means your transcript will send in January to OCAS. So not only will we see your fall semester courses completed, we'll also be able to see your uh, winter courses on your transcript. So any of those in progress courses will appear on your transcript if you submit it at the end of the fall semester. Uh, and this can allow for you to be still in the process of completing any prerequisite courses, let's say an anatomy or a physiology course that you are still uh, attempting in your final semester. Um, alrighty, so that's uh, the application process. We can move on to tuition. Uh, 
All right. So we have here uh, our 2023-2024 tuition breakdown. Uh, we can, you can see it's uh, divided by year and then furthermore by the semester fees. Um, for, we'll use fall year one as an example, it's 3880. Uh, other fees are uh, the ancillary fees, um, bringing it to a total of 4947. Uh, and then you can see subsequently the, the following year tuitions. Um, and then a few notes on uh, things such as the deposit. So if, should you receive an offer to the program, uh, you'll be required to pay a $500 tuition deposit, uh, and that will be applied to your fall, uh, your first term in your first year. Uh, so that $500 just secures your seat into the program. Okay, moving on. All right, so we now would like to afford people the opportunity to ask any questions they may have. Uh, so far, we have only received one question. Uh, let's see, the few will roll in now. Is this open to international students? Yes, for the fall 2024 intake, Michener is now allowing international students to apply. So we will be accepting internationals. Any other questions? Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, if you are uh, concerned or would like further clarification on any admission requirements, we will be holding a webinar on the 7th of December. Uh, here, somebody has asked what CGPA and CASPER are considered competitive. Um, so each year, our applicant um, numbers are quite uh, different. So some years it can be quite competitive and other years less competitive. What's important is to ensure you have the minimum. So while while we're not going to, we, we don't quite disclose our exact scores, uh, a strong CGPA with a strong CASPER score um, is anything above the minimum requirement at the time, at this time. When do you typically send out acceptances? So our goal uh, at Michener is to have all applications evaluated by the end of April. So typically we are sending offers in May, uh, early May, mid-May, and sometimes earlier. It truly depends. Uh, the next question is how much is student residence? I unfortunately don't have that answer on hand, but what I would suggest is to email success at michener.ca uh, and the our student success network so success at michener.ca would uh, be able to assist you with that inquiry and any other questions you might have about residence about how many people apply and get in do you have any stats from last year so typically we receive about two to three qualified applicants per seat offered uh, so um Last year, I believe our intake was around 40. So we're looking around 80 to 100 qualified applicants per seat. And like I said, these stats change year by year. Demand sometimes increases, sometimes less. Uh, so it, it, there's, uh, there's no exact numbers that we can really provide. Um, but yeah, that's about accurate. All right, uh, we'll leave maybe one more minute just in case anyone has any last questions and then we will move on. Ah, uh, can we still use our Casper score if we didn't write the Casper on the dates pre-booked by Michener? Possibly is the answer. Uh, at Michener, we have a specific Casper test type that we require. So what you'll need to do is ensure that the Casper test you've already taken for this year, possibly for another program, is actually the same test that Michener requires. You'd have to speak to, to Altus, who is the operator of Casper. Um, first, I would check the test type you've taken. Then if it is, in fact, the same, you would want to reach out to Altus and ask them to 
uh, add Michener as a recipient of your test result. So unfortunately, our office cannot provide uh, that aspect. We we're not, we're, we can't act as an intermediary for you as an applicant to Casper. You as the applicant need to speak with Casper directly and um, ask them to have Michener as a recipient. On your clinical year, would you still live in residence? Megan, do you have an answer to that? I don't think you can be in residence. Since... I know some third year students have lived in residence and uh, sometimes they split it with another colleague depending on whether their, lo their uh, clinical experience is in the GTA or not. But we have had third years who, who do live in residence sometimes for one semester or uh, I think they've split it for part of a semester as well. Mira? I think um, so residences are reserved for first year students. Um, so unless they are like a don in the in the residence, uh, they don't get uh, a, a room in second or third year. Um, uh, I don't know if Olivia has something to say. She's turned on the camera so you can answer. Yeah, I was just I was actually looking into living in residence in my third year um, and you are welcome to apply um, like Mira or Megan was saying they do take first year students first but if there are any openings um, your applications will be considered and I believe um, you can do it for a semester or um, like a certain period of time it just all depends basically how many spots are filled by first year. Great thank you so we are running uh out of time, unfortunately. So I, there's two more questions I'd like to address. Uh, I'm gonna start with um, asking Olivia and Jenny, uh, if you'd be so kind, what's been your favorite class that you've taken in the program? Um, I can go first. Um, I think my favorite course um, was probably anatomy. Um, I really, like I, I have some previous knowledge from anatomy in my undergrad, um, but the anatomy lab in first year is so cool. Um, you get to do a dissection lab and really see, it just solidifies all of your knowledge. Um, and I still find myself thinking back to working um, in that lab and sort of how different muscles work and that sort of thing. So it was, yeah, that was really cool. Um, I think for myself, uh, I would agree with Olivia. I did really like the dissection as well, just to be able to see um, what we're learning put onto a real body and to see the real muscles and everything. Um, but I'd say for myself right now, I'm really liking injections, uh, learning how to numb the toe for doing procedures or how to do a uh, corticosteroid injection. Those are really interesting to me. Great, thank you. Uh, last question of the day. Um, this will be for Megan. Uh, how does clinical placement work? Do students have to apply an interview like for some other programs offered at other schools or do uh, we have to find them alone? No, we have a department at uh, Michener who looks at uh, clinical education and finds clinical placements. It is a lottery system um, for geographical areas. Um, and sometimes certain areas are more popular than others, um, but we will provide you with a spot and a clinical site for your education. Great. All right, so that will be wrapping things up for the day. Uh, we just have one or two more slides remaining. Uh, just want to alert everyone that we do hold Ask Me sessions. This is our Ask Michener uh, admission drop-ins every Wednesday. You're welcome to sign up uh, on our events page. It's uh, it's operated on Teams, so you would join us on Teams uh, from 12.30 to 1.30 and gives you an opportunity. Sorry, Dylan. It's on Zoom. Oh, Zoom. Sorry. Uh, it's on Zoom, like this is, uh, from 12.30 to 1.30, and we are happy to do a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about any admission requirements or your ed current education. So those are every Wednesday. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there's a, an admission requirements full-time program presentation on December 7th. On the 23rd of January, there'll be a spotlight for the Digital Health and Data Analytics program, which is one of our newer programs. And then lastly, our newest program, uh, Fundamentals of Healthcare, will be spotlighted on the 22nd of February. 
And if you want to follow us on social media, you can check out our Facebook, Twitter, well, X, our in, uh, Instagram, or even LinkedIn. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope this was informative for our, our attendees. And of course, thank you so much, our chair, our PCL, Olivia, Jenny. Thank you so much.